Hello everyone and welcome to Synchronous Online Teaching Strategies for Educators Part 2. Um, my name is Teresa Wills. I'm an assistant professor at George Mason University and this is an example of my normal. I usually teach online. It's my preferred method of teaching um, and it's preferred because uh, I find it to be very collaborative, uh, interactive, and engaging. Today I hope to share with you uh, some of the reasons why and some of the tips so that you can have interactive, engaging, and collaborative uh, classes as well. I'm going to be posting the link to the slide in the chat box quite a bit uh, as we begin. That way our newcomers can click right in and get started, um, but you won't need to click on it more than the one time to have it open. Um, all right, so on slide two, we have our math specialist slide. This is the program that I teach in. And if you're interested in becoming math specialists and interested in learning your whole coursework this way, you might check out um, our program. And then check out slide three. I'll give you a minute to look at those. This is not a theoretical um, situation here. I've been teaching online for 10 years. This is examples of my normal. And these are um, what my students say about my classes. <clears throat> Below that, I'll refer to these as the gray slides. Um, the gray slides include frequently asked questions um, answered through video. It includes um, recordings from previous sessions. It includes blank uh, shell slideshows before we edit it. And it includes um, completed slideshows. Um, there's different sessions. So um, on slide five was part, well, zero, because we didn't have a name for it. Slide six was part one. Um, slide seven was just different math strategies. And slide eight are part of our mather days if you're a math um, teacher. And so we'll get more of these gray slides the more sessions I do. And you can join me on slide nine for our goal. All right, I can see you all moving to slide nine. Um, my goal for you is to do the great things that you're already doing, just turn them into something that can be done online. Uh, because quality online learning requires excellent pedagogy, and a teacher can't just be replaced by a computer. Slide 10 is our successes and celebrations, and I'm actually going to do a duplicate slide because we have a larger group. Um, if you would pick either slide 10 or 11, insert a text box and tell us what are you celebrating today? I'll make that little purple arrow dance. That's what your text box button looks like and it's up at the very top of your screen. It looks like quite a few of you are mentioning spring break, yet you're also here. Um, on my personal Facebook, I had a big kudos message to all the teachers out there who are working during their spring break. Um, but if you are on spring break, would you write in the chat box, like what's something you're gonna do to relax and celebrate a little break here? Thank you. 
And whoever wrote in here, my team and I planned our first week of distance learning and it looks great. Uh, give us some tips. What did you do? Would you turn on your microphone and just kind of tell us a little bit about this? Sure. Hi. Good morning. My name is Jennifer. Um, I, we, I teach first grade. So what we did is we decided for our kids, we needed to be really structured. Um, we've all tried collaborate with them just for sessions to kind of do like the class meeting thing. But we decided that for learning time, we need to be really structured. So we um, have used some um, of our reading strategies. We posted our reading strategy posters we usually use in the classroom. We're going to do a little read aloud and practice with them during that time. Um, and then for math, we took one of our smart boards that we usually use and just recreated it so that it could be done through Collaborate. That's wonderful. I really enjoy hearing about the structure because you're right, you know, different ages definitely need different structures here. Uh, Margo, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with your family? Hi, sorry, I couldn't find the window. So I uh, work for Fairfax and I'm an educational specialist in an AAP. So I brought home our Project M Squared books and I have a second grader and a kindergartner. So I'm working through um, one of the math units and trying out all the lessons at home so I can see how they work with my kids before I recommend them to families. So that's been pretty interesting. What a fun way to enjoy family time, but also a little bit of your uh, planning at the same time. Wonderful. And who is roasting marshmallows in the backyard? I know we have been doing that every day since the kids been off school. Who's that? That is me. Um, I have two boys who um, are scouts and we decided to build the fire pit. That is wonderful. All right, folks, again, our successes and celebrations, um, while it's not content rich, it really supplies students with a sense of community, which is really important for distance learning. And it's also really important for um, you to have a place where kids can feel open to get their sillies out. Um, if you provide the place, they're more likely to do the social interaction um, and the kind of fun stuff on those slides and be more focused for your own slides. I know there was one teacher who mentioned she's gonna have just a Fortnite slide where people can write anything they want about Fortnite because once she supplied the slide, that's where all the conversation went and then her classes were a little more focused. So do whatever works for you, but uh, definitely bring that sense of community together. All right, if we can make sure if you're not talking that your microphone is turned off, I can mute on my end, um, but it's uh, nice if you can turn that off when you're not the one talking. And join me down on slide 12. Join me on slide 12. All right, um, if you would please fill out one of the bullet points here, and you know what, we've got a big group, so I'm gonna duplicate this slide. On either 12 or 13, tell us what do you know about distance learning and what do you want to know? In our part one session, we learned how to use things like the heart, the star, the smiley face. Um, if you would like to add any of those or if you would like to highlight something that you really agree with on here, feel free to.
Wonderful. All right, this gives me some direction uh, for how to take the class uh, based on those want to knows. If you join me on slide 14 and 15, I'm going to show you an example of a brain dump. So earlier, this the one you did on 12 and 13 was a KWL. Um, no, want to know at the end, we'll figure out the learn section. Uh, again, I'm not teaching teachers how to teach. I'm teaching you how to tweak it in an online environment. So I know many of you do a KWL, and many of you also do something called a brain dump or a way of gathering people's ideas. On slides 14 and 15, um, you are going to take over one of these boxes and you're going to put in some sort of website. But frequently, URLs are really like big and kind of annoying. And so instead, if you were going to do like Kahoot, you would write the name of the app there and then you're going to link it to um, the URL. If you're not sure how to do it, no worries. I made a little how-to video for you in the very first box. Just open that up. Watch how to link it, and then go ahead and link your great websites for distance learning. Again, if you're just joining us, welcome. We are on slides 14 and 15, and we're doing a brain dump of websites that are great for distance learning. And there's lots of room on slide 15. And we'll be using this for um, very specific purposes soon, but I'd like to throw this back at you all as these great educators who are experts in pedagogy. How might you use this template and the idea that you're going to link a website with your students? How might you use that in your content area? If you have an idea, feel free to turn on your microphone. Uh, Laura, go ahead. Um, maybe so when you're done um, with um, like a live lesson, maybe you could direct students to that slide and say, OK, like these are the couple of websites that you can go to for the next um, hour or so. Excellent. So you could have the slide kind of pre-made with links for students to go to. And, um, oh, go ahead, Chrissy. So I was <clears throat> thinking at the end of a lesson, if the kids have all produced something, they could, they could link their work here. They would just turn on shareable links and then show so all the students can see what they worked on. Very cool. So that's an, a nice way of bringing your class together on all the shared links. One teacher mentioned she was doing a lesson on uh, fact versus opinion, 
and students were just to go um, go free on the internet, find different things um, like tomatoes are the best vegetable, and they would put that phrase in and then they would link it to wherever they found that source and then other kids were to go in and see if that was fact or opinion um, and, and gave the kids the opportunity to do that. In math, if I'm teaching uh, area of different shapes, I'll have my students kind of go out, look up some YouTube videos, and if they find ones that are really good that help them to understand area of these uh, shapes, they'll go ahead and put those links in. And so it's a student collected um, bunch of links. <clears throat> awesome. All right, for our next activity, you're going to be copying and pasting these links. Um, you can copy and paste the whole text box, or you can just copy and paste the link. It really doesn't matter which one you do, whatever works best for your graphic organizer. But I want you to have some time to explore some of these different websites that your peers have mentioned up here. Join me on slide 16 for your activity directions. Slide 16 is the breakout room activity slide. Um, I've already predetermined how I want my groups, the time I want, and the directions for uh, the groups. We're going to have um, five different breakout rooms. And depending on which room you go to, you're going to have a different graphic organizer. So group one will have the purple, group two will have the blue, group three will have the green, and it goes down. This time the slides are different um, because afterwards we're going to jigsaw these. And what you'll do is you'll use the links that you created above in order to fill out your graphic organizer. Some of these you're going to have to click on and explore because you don't know them off the top of your head and that's great for learning and exploring. Others you do have information on and you can feel free to divide and conquer, but also make sure your microphone's on so you can listen to one another. Hi Lisa, did you have a question before we start? No. Sorry. No worries. No. All right. Um, I am setting up breakout rooms now. You'll be able to see it in the recording. Also, there's a, a quick video on slide two. Um, and uh, you'll be in your breakout rooms. And we will start in three, two, one, now. and you can put questions in the middle of the videos and kids can't like skip past parts of the video and they can't skip the questions either once you create it. Okay. of Delta Math. What is that?
What do you guys think about JSON? I mean, it's challenging, but it's not too hard. You can just assign things. Their experiments are the best. They are good. I'll put it in the middle. I might be in the wrong slide. You said we're on slide 21? Uh, I think so. We're group five. Oops. Right. Yep. I, yeah, I think we're group I put mine two. in the wrong place. Do you know what that is? Um, I do. Um, hang on, I'm just learning how to do this and then I'll tell you. Okay. Can't walk you to ask that well yet. So I'm clicking the whole text box and then it's doing copy. And then I'm just putting that into the. Okay. Okay, so um, which one you asked about RAS kids? Yes. RASKIT is, um, it's, a, it's a part of reading A to Z. Have you heard of reading A to Z? Yes. So it's one division of reading A to Z, and you can um, assign your kids a level, and it will give them like 15 books at that level to read. Um, they can read to it, they can read the book, they can listen to the book, and then they can take a quiz. Oh, nice. Do you know if you need like a school account for that? Normally you do, but they are offering it for free from now to the end of the year. However, it is not an approved site by the county. So you um, need permission then? Yeah, well, the way that I did it, I'm a reading specialist and I offered it to all my intervention kids. And I basically told the parents that it was, it was coming from me personally, that it was not approved by the county and it was an option or a choice for them. And almost all of them did it. Right. Okay. Um, and I know, so I put Prodigy in there in the middle. Um, I feel like every time I, I, so Dr. Wells is my professor, and I feel like I've done a bunch of, like, PDs, like, mini little things about Prodigy. So Prodigy is for math, and it's, like, it's, like, this type of, like, Dungeons and Dragons type of game or something. I've never played that, so I think, I just think it's like that. Um, but they, like, just play games, and it, like, teaches them how to do math as they're playing the games. Like, get, they get to battle each other and everything, too. And then you keep track of their progress. You can assign them work on that. So that's why I have that in the middle. Oh, that sounds very cool. Um, technical question. I see some of us are putting just links in there, and some of us are putting Xbox. What do you think the difference is? Um, I think, wait, I see all links, though. I see links, but I see, like, two without a text box around it. Do you think it matters? Uh, okay, so I somehow, the I put in reworks, and it just, I don't know how, I think I copied the word, like, rework mm -hmm. on the first slide, and when I clicked paste onto this one, it didn't have the text box around it. I mean, ReadWorks does have a text box around it, but it's just um, like. Oh, my. And then download the Google Drive app and like log in with my username from work and upload it there. Okay. You can also upload it to SchoolTube through Google as well. So once you, what, oh, go ahead. once you put it in Google Drive, then you can go back on your computer and get it on um, SchoolTube. What school are you at that you can't use YouTube? I'm just curious. Uh, Coach Elementary. Is that Fairfax County? Yeah, mm -hmm. Fairfax County, all the librarians got emails, but I don't think all the librarians have told everyone. Our librarian sent it out, but we're not allowed to use YouTube in the county. We were told oh, the exact same thing. I was told I could, that I put it on my... <clears throat> And I think the kids are going to start learning to pick and choose very quickly what they want to do and what they don't want to do. <laughs> right, right, right. It kind of makes me a little bit 
I don't know, I guess nervous about like how much time and effort we put into making things really great, like depending on, I guess, what the outcome is going to be and how many are going to show up. Exactly. They're going to get what they're, they're going to get what they put into it. And I don't mind putting my time and effort into it because if, if the kids are wanting to do it, I want it to be there for them. And we all know we're going to have to fix this. Definitely noticing that there's a lot more reading and math um, than science and social studies that people have shared. Right. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hello, hello, and welcome back. We're all back in the main room. If you could monitor your microphone, I think I've got everyone muted. Uh, just make sure that your microphone is off. Welcome back. All right, so um, the purpose of this was to, again, do things you're already doing in the classroom where you might have some kind of a sort or a graphic organizer, something where students are analyzing, categorizing, or sorting. Um, in our next activity, I'm going to model how you would do a jigsaw in an online class. You may have noticed that your names were highlighted in different colors at the top of your page, and your color is going to be associated uh, with what room you go into. If you didn't get your name up there, no worries, just move to any um, any room you like. Um, and we're gonna jigsaw, which means everyone that's highlighted in pink is gonna go down to slide 23. You're gonna talk together first about each of your slides. And when you finish talking about each of your slides, you're gonna complete slide 23. Everyone who's in orange, it's gonna go through, talk about all the different slides, and then they're gonna complete the orange slide on 24. Yellow, again, go through all your slides, complete slide 25. Green and blue, 26 and 27. Um, this time around, you all are gonna put yourselves in breakout rooms. I'm ready uh, to show you how to do that. Uh, We're gonna have five different breakout rooms and you're going to move yourselves. The breakout rooms have started and anyone who hears me is still in the main room and I will keep uh, talking you through how to find the breakout rooms. So you'll want to go into collaborate. Click on the participants tab. It's in the purple buttons in the bottom right next to the chat box. And if you scroll way down underneath all those people, you'll see the different groups and a green arrow to let you into the room. Again, if your name wasn't up on the uh, list, you may just go into any room and participate that way. If you're still in the main room, you're going to click on the participants tab. It's next to the chat box in collaborate. And you're going to scroll way, 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 way down 
to see the different groups. there's still a couple people in the main room and what you'll do is you'll go back over to collaborate next to the chat box is a participants tab and if you scroll way below all the people's names you'll see the different groups and you just click on that little green arrow to go in All right, I see there's just four of us left. Um, does anyone need help getting into the different rooms? collaborative and then um, the other one where students can interact but they can't collaborate with the class um, something that was new to our group because a lot of us were elementary was um, delta math which apparently is grade 7 through 12 and it's more kids solving math problems and they have to get 10 right before they're done but you could you know do 20 problems to get 10 right um, and then we just sorted between the more collaborative Kara. Hi. Um, so you did a fabulous job of following uh, the directions that I had planned, but I think I need to get a little bit more clear about them for the next session. So why don't you go ahead and join um, group one. Oh, okay. I see Jen's in here now. I, I can try and pull other people back in, but I think most people are set uh, where they are. Um, so it's fine. Yeah, Jen I and Kara, go ahead and stay in this room, okay? I'll pull some yeah, people in. Okay. I thought I was in the right, wasn't like the green names I thought were in here, but I don't know what happened. Should we? Are, are Jen, are you online? I am, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I guess, what slide did you do, Jen? Um, I was in the... Um, Group five, the last one. Okay, I was in group four. Okay. So, um, do you want to go ahead and start, or do you want me to start? Um, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. We can I'll start since four goes before five. So, okay. <laughs> so for us, what we did is we had to sort the. Um, the next thing. Ed puzzle up when you create videos like you can take a YouTube video or you could even take a con video whether you hate it or love it 
Um, once you put it in Ed Puddle, Ed Puzzle, like they can't skip through the video. Like they can't scrub through it. They actually have to watch it and they right. have to answer the questions. So that's kind of nice. And then it makes a spreadsheet of their answers, correct? Yep. You get information from the answers and you don't have to do a whole lot to get that. You just um, have them sign in through Google and you like there's, a, I think there's a code that goes with it when you share it out. It's, it, it just takes care of creating your class for you. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I was in part of group three. We did no subscription, free trial, and paid subscription. Um, I'm still an intern, so I really only use like Kahoot, Epic, Brain Pop, and stuff like that in my classroom for elementary. They talk a lot about Facebook group, but that's like more school based. We really didn't use it in my cl the class I was in. But I taught my kids while I was interning how to play Kahoot, and they enjoyed it so much. Because I guess it's more like interactive for them, and they're, they're still learning at the same time. Mm hmm Oh, somebody I, didn't put a Quizlet is on there. Sorry. Carry on. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. The rest of the stuff, I still have to look in myself, because when I took a math over the summer, she gave some math motive to the line, but it stopped working because of the Adobe stuff that's not working on well, Flash. So I was looking for more manipulatives, so I was good to see them. Yeah, they're working on that flash business. is a nightmare. So I was in group yellow, and um, we kind of sort all the strategies according to subjects. For example, English, math, social studies, general, and um, um, I can't remember the other one. And it was very interesting to see that I had no idea about math strategies or kind of a little bit of social studies, but I'm an ESOL teacher, so I know more about the ESOL strategies or English strategies. No, different. Oh, so I guess now it's born just me. Um, we had to sort uh, websites based on how easy or complex they were to use and or implement. Hi there, Cheryl and uh, Kirsten. Uh, feel free to move into any of the groups. They are going over some of the group work that they had done previously and filling out a new graphic organizer. Um, if you go to the participants tab, you can click on the arrow to go into any group. said Wixie? Yeah, it's called Wixie and it's the county has a, a um, account if you're in Fairfax. Or the, yeah, I am. Um, so the county has it. It's one of their approved site, you know, approved sites and they have uh, yeah. <laughs> access to it. I had never seen like there's templates for everything and it, it, it it's good for all like K through six. Definitely. But the problem I have is I don't know exactly how to get the kids in and assign them a lesson. You know, figuring all that out is the hard part. Oh, yeah. I'm on the website. Holy moly, that's a lot. Yeah, and then when you go into the templates, like there's just my one of my teammates since she sat forever, like going through all the things that could be used. Wow. Have we done the blue slide yet? 
no. no. <laughs> Um, I was in the group that did the blue slide. I guess that's kind of how they put us up. Um, so that every, somebody from every group is in there. This one dissects um, all of the links into whether it's really just student independent on the left side or on the right side. It is more um, quite the other way around. So on the right side, students uh, can interact with it, but it's not something that they would collaborate with as a class. And then on the left side, it's things that you could use to collaborate as a class. Okay. So I guess you could assign stuff on the right, but then use in your virtual teaching stuff on the left. And most of it, because I'm a math specialist, most of it is math that I see. Right. And I would say most of it is, oh, most of it's third up, but a lot of it could be differentiated. Hi there, Group 5. As you fill out your 321, be sure to um, make sure that you are all agreeing on it um, and you turn on your mics and you discuss that. I apologize to anyone who just heard me fussing at my children to brush their teeth. It's like living the same life across the county or wherever you might be. <laughs> it, it is like a daily chore for some reason. Like, it just isn't an automatic thing. It's too funny. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the main room. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. You are back in the main room now. If you can monitor your microphone, um, I think I've got most of them turned off. And uh, at this point, I'm going to model a whole group discussion. If you can come on down to slide 28, please. Slide 28 is a place where I remind students that there's multiple ways that they can respond. So if you're going to add new information, a new idea that hasn't been spread yet, you're going to raise your hand and collaborate and use your microphone. That's for new ideas. If you uh, have a personal experience and you can relate to it, or maybe you're just going to affirm a really good idea that someone had, 
Or maybe you want to push back a little bit and say, well, what about this? If you have any of those um, affirm, relate, pushback, or shared experiences, you're going to use the chat box for it. And we're going to model what it's like to have a lot of voice happening and a lot of chat happening. For some students, they love these multiple modalities, and this is a chance for you to experience. So please try and use um, one or both of them. So our discussion prompts are on the activities that you did. We did a brain dump, you worked on a graphic organizer, you uh, did a jigsaw, and you summarized through a three, two, one. Um, my questions for you are, how, how were you motivated to engage in this activity? And how might you use these activities, whether they're link sorts or graphic organizers in your content area? New ideas hand up and relating it uh, in the chat box. Laura, go ahead. The original slide where we were putting in the text links, um, I'm picturing that I could use that for like an open word sort and then the kids could drag it to the next slide and have a discussion with each other about why they're sorting words that particular way. Absolutely. So it sounds like if you have room on that new slide for the why, it gives them more space for that. What a great idea. Other ideas. Go ahead and put a hand up to use your mic and use the chat box to relate. Go ahead, Laura. My other thought was that you could use the links page to link different texts that are all around like a text set. Um, like maybe you're thinking about author's bias and have each kid choose an article and then use like the breakout for them to discuss their different articles together. And then you could have a third follow up slide for them to document that. Ooh, I really like the way you kind of are, are moving people around that way and giving them a space to write. Very cool. If you all have other ideas, feel free to put up a hand or use the chat box. Um, I wanna comment on one of the things I've been reading in the chat box, and it's talking about um, you know younger students, kindergartner, first graders, um, and it, I have a first grader. I also um, am the leader of a daisy troop, at, which is kindergarten and first grade. And I've been reaching out to them uh, first through Flipgrid so I could see that they were getting their competencies in Flipgrid. Um, and then this week I'm giving them a um, Google slide and they're going to um, put a clip art that I've kind of prearranged next to their photos. So they're just starting off on kind of the basics here, but I'm excited that we are learning our badge in uh, digital literacy. So um, always opportunities for that, but we go nice and slow with our, with our younger kiddos. Oh, absolutely, yeah, um, I'll get that for you right right here at the ending. All right, so um, today what I hope to show you in, in this part two um, was our KWL, um, the brain dump, the different um, graphic organizers, uh, the jigsaw and the three, two, one. And now if you'll come back to our uh, uh, KWL, we are going to fill this part out now. Takes me just a minute to get it, get it started. All right, slide 29 and slide 30 are all ready for you. Go ahead and tell us something that you've learned. And we can make a third slide if we need more duplicates, more room.
There's additional room on slide 31. You've run out of space. Laura, if you're going to, um, up, you can upload your PowerPoint slides to Drive and a little button will appear and it'll say like, do you want to turn this into a um, Google Slides? And then that becomes interactive. Thank you. All right, folks, that is, uh, those are the new templates I have for you for this session two. Um, if you'd like to join me for session three, um, part three, we're really going to focus on English language learners sorts and um, categorizing um, things. And so that's coming up um, in, it starts next Sunday. And if you just keep an eye on the tiny URL, I keep updating uh, them as we go. Um, on slide 32 is my scavenger hunt that I give students at the very beginning to figure out what their competencies are in Google Slides. That way I'm not guessing, do my students know how to copy and paste? I don't know, should I teach them that? I'm not sure. I just give them this and you can change the uh, output it doesn't have to be about them. Maybe it could be about everything they know about um, animal cells and you're going to have them do a, a slide. So it could be content related. Slide 33 and below are templates from this slide deck, but um, I've also maintained a, a PowerPoint with all the templates I've used in any of these sessions. So you can click there for even more templates. I try to keep the slide length a little shorter. And our virtual parking lot is down on slide 51. And on 51, I also have things like my email address, my Twitter, uh, the tiny URL will have um, information about session threes. Um, also, I'm still doing session one and two if you know people that might need to um, kind of brush up on their online uh, teaching skills. My YouTube channel, I try and put out videos every day, just keep adding to it. Um, and so if you wanted to subscribe to that, you would get them um, updated as they come in. But at this time, I will answer questions in the virtual parking lot. I hope you all have learned some cool new tricks to continue the same pedagogy that you're already experts in and just turn it into something online. I look forward to seeing um, many of you in future sessions, and I really look forward to hearing about how you use these templates in your instruction. So don't be afraid to send a shout out if you use one of them or a screen capture and let me know. It definitely makes my day. Um, so good luck with your online teaching, and if you have any questions, just pop them in the virtual parking lot.